Hi, I'm Hannah. Uh, ever since I was seven years old, I've wanted to be an astronomer. Now I'm 27 and I'm going to give it a try. Go on, talk, have fun. <laughs> what do I say? It's so weird. I know, I don't, I don't know where to look as well. Why are you making this video? I'm making this video because my friend Millie sent me a link on Facebook to a scholarship. It's Cards Against Humanity. Uh, they had a science extension pack and all of their profits as far as I'm aware, I went towards a Women in STEM scholarship. Uh, and I saw it and I saw the dollars and I was like, that's only available to US citizens. <laughs> the brief was to get the scholarship that you submit a video. And I thought, screw it, I'm going to submit a video anyway. This is not conforming to the brief, I don't think, because you're meant to talk passionately about a, a subject in science. <laughs> and I'm talking passionately about science, but I'm not talking about a specific subject. But, but it inspired me, but hopefully by making this video, uh, it will encourage more people in this situation to come forward and tell me their stories. I really want to know your stories. And also to hear about other people in the same situation so that we can bond together and lobby the government or, I don't know, ask Brian Cox for a stipend. <laughs> what is it that you love about science? Everything. For me, it's the... I want to use the word childish, but I think I mean innocent. Curiosity that you have, at least when I first discovered it, the excitement of figuring out how things work. But also, what else is out there? And I'm gonna, I feel like I'm sounding really pretentious. What else is out there? <laughs> it's just incredible. It's incredible how much we, the human race, know about science and about the world and the universe. And that was initially the hook. So I want all of that information to be poured into my head. But then I want to be part of discovering what else is out there and what we don't know. And science informs lots of things and I'm not taking away from any other subjects because I love literature. <laughs> but if we don't keep pushing forward then there's going to be so many things we're going to miss out on. You know, everyone talks about the fact that our iPhones are as powerful as the rockets that took astronauts to the moon, etc. Um, and so many things come out of experiments that people don't know about. So that I want to be part of that. Now, why don't you tell us about why you haven't become an astrologer? Astronomer. <laughs> There's a difference? What, between astrologer and astronomer? Hell yeah! Oh, sorry. Astrologer's right homestead. Oh! So why haven't you become an astronomer already? An astronomer. <laughs> <laughs> so why haven't you become an astronomer before? Someone said, if you want to be an astronomer, that's great, but you have to study maths and science. And that's really hard. My vision of astronomy and learning about the universe and all of the words that I'd read and looking up at the night sky, I thought, really, is that, that sounds really dry. Uh, how can that be? And it wasn't until I was a bit older, in my second year at university, that I kind of saw the correlation between maths and science and the beauty of astronomy and this thing that I'd fallen in love with. Uh, and that was too late. <laughs> <laughs> so, do you think that boys are more likely to do astronomy than girls? Yes. <laughs> Why is that? We know boys are more likely to do those subjects because there are scholarships for girls and women in STEM, um, so not just astronomy but science, technology, engineering, maths, to pursue these subjects. So for you, why now? Why do you want to change your career path now and go back and do it? When I got to my second year of university, I read a book that changed everything. <laughs> but this book by Bill Bryson, A Short History of Nearly Everything, mm. it started off with the universe and went through the history of science. I actually started reading it thinking it was a short hist history mm. of like humanity's history. <laughs> it put my childhood enthusiasm and love of astronomy together with, with maths and physics and it made sense and I was like, shit! <laughs> That's why I love physics. I do like maths, I just didn't understand the correlation between maths and physics and astronomy. Mm. Um, that realisation has never left and now that four years since I've graduated uh, I've just been going over and over in my mind how to go back and study physics um, and now we sit here today on the brink of what hopefully will be next year, my first year of studying physics. Mm. So what do you think is wrong with the government programmes that already exist? <sighs> Most of the programmes that exist to encourage girls to study science or STEM um, exist in traditional formats and what I mean by traditional formats is uh, you're, you're getting girls that are at GCSE level or A level or primary school which is great we need to do that that's wonderful but uh, they also offer scholarships for women that are already in STEM and have careers and are PhDs etc but there's not very much for people who want to retrain and that's not just women um, 
So that's what's wrong. <laughs> like once you've done your degree, and most people are 18 when they do their degree, so they, it's a big ask to, to know what they want to do for the rest of their lives. Once you've done that, you don't get any funding for a second degree. And obviously doing a second degree is a privilege, doing a first degree is a privilege, but there's nothing. And now that the fees are nine grand a year, it's pricing everyone out. What would you tell your six-year-old self now hmm. with the knowledge that you now have? <laughs> now that I'm wise, I would tell six-year-old Hannah to not be scared of maths and science and to realise that what is taught at school is not necessarily what science is. I would tell her that astronomy is as great as you think it is. I would say go on YouTube and watch all of those cool videos that didn't exist when you were six years old. <laughs> Beg your parents to take you to the science museum. Keep this spirit alive. That's what I would do. And go and find inspirational people who have done it. Go and talk to women who have done it. If you could design the perfect scholarship scheme, I guess for STEM, what would it look like? <sighs> That's a big question. Well, I'd probably make I'd probably make education free. <laughs> <laughs> so what is your plan now? So what are you planning on doing? My plan now is to apply for the Foundation Year Physics and Engineering at the University of Nottingham and then go on to a degree. So the Foundation Year enables you to access physics or engineering or computer studies I think without the relevant A-levels, so non-traditional. Do that for a year full time which I'll have to fund myself because there's no funding or grants or anything available to anyone who's got a degree, um, which is nine grand, so I'm going to pull that out of a hat. And after that, I will go on to a part-time, at the moment, engineering degree, even though I want to study physics. And this is because, and it's good and bad, there is a new government education policy that if you already have a degree, but you want to retrain in engineering, computer science or technology, you can access a tuition fee loan, but only if you study part-time. So tell us about your GoFundMe. I've set up a GoFundMe because... My first year is the foundation year and I'm going to try my best to save up all of the pennies myself by working all of the jobs that I can until September when I get in, if I get in. Any money raised through GoFundMe will only be released if I get in. I've seen other people use it before to raise funds uh, for university. I'm in a position where this is probably the only option. I'm going to try and raise as much money myself through working. I'm not very good at asking for help, uh, so I don't like doing this. <laughs> And uh, mum and dad, if you're watching, <laughs> I will pay every single penny back, I promise. <laughs> Ultimately, I hope that I don't need to use any of it. Uh, and I hope that the government uh, wake up and realise that there are passionate people out there that want to study these subjects. And in the future, I hope that I can set up a scholarship if this gap is still not being filled. But I also hope in the future that I get involved in science communication and lobby the government and really make a positive change. So what what I want to do now is um, I'm going to leave my my Twitter and I don't know if you can put emails and stuff down there but some way of getting in contact with me if you're in this position if you've retrained in STEM or you've come from a non-traditional background or whatever I want to hear from you I want you to get in touch if you're thinking about doing the same thing and you, you feel this video chimes with you please get in touch with me as well it's up to you guys now share the video if you think anyone wants to watch it but get in touch because I know I'm not alone